Hey guys, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to get right into making the melody for our track. Now, don't worry, you don't need any music theory knowledge to make a basic chord progression in Cubase, as we can use Cubase chord pads. Oh yeah, easy peasy. You get to chord pads by showing the lower zone. We've already got the lower zone open, and there are a few sort of different tabs we can select down here. We've already seen the sampler control and the editor. The mix console we're going to get to later, so for now we just want to click on chord pads. So at the moment this is showing us some basic chords and chord pads comes with many different pre-programmed chord progressions that you can use and modify, which we'll get to in just a sec, but at the moment when we click on one of the pads we don't get any sound out of it. Now this is because we need to link an instrument to it. So remember how if you want to get anything into your project, you can make that happen from the right hand zone. So instead of an audio sample, this time we want an instrument. So we just go back to the home and then we can click on VST instruments. Now down here under synth, we're going to see all of the Cubase instruments that we've got. These are referred to as VST instruments or VSTIs for short. And we want Halion Sonic for this. So just drag Halion into a blank space in the project window. Now at the moment we got that sound playing. Now we just want to turn this down a little bit, so I'm just going to go to the track properties with the Halion track selected and just turn that down a bit. And we want to modify this sound, it's not quite the right sound for what we want, so we're just going to go to load, which shows us all of the attributes or the different attributes of the presets that we can pick. And we're going to go for a synth pad in this particular situation. And just double click on any of these presets to audition them. Okay, so double click on copper mine. This is probably the best sort of sound for this sort of thing. Now we can close Halion, and now when I click on one of the pads, we get sound. So that's playing a C major chord at the moment. So one thing we just want to do is click this little monitor button on the Halion track. If I don't have that on and I click off Halion and I try and play a chord, it's not going to play the Halion track. So if I've got the Halion track selected, hit the little monitor button, and now whenever I play a chord it will and click off the track it will still play from the Halion instrument. So as I mentioned there are loads of different chord presets you can use in chord pads so you get to those by clicking on this button here chord pads presets load chord pads preset and then we got all of these different presets that we can use and you can see as I select them it will just update the pads. So for this particular track we want A sharp minor, so we just click that and we can see the chords updates and we can just close this window. So that's playing A sharp minor at the moment. Now what I want to do before I do anything else is click on this down arrow and go to lock all pads. So this just simply means that as we're playing around with these pads they're going to stay locked to one particular voicing, it won't update as we sort of play through them just better to have that locked uh, if you're new to this. Now you can have other chords playing apart from the ones that we've got here. So if we click on show hide chord assistant. So this here shows your sort of root chord or the chord of your, your actual scale. Ours is A sharp minor. And then spanning out from here are sort of chords that are most related harmonically. So these ones will all work nicely with our root chord, but as we get further out, you can hear they sort of can get a bit more dissonant, and the further out we go, the more sort of harmonically complex they're going to get, so it's easier to get a more sort of pleasing chord progression by using chords that are close to our original or our root chord. And what you can do as well, if you haven't got, if you've got a chord in here that you haven't got in your chord progression laid out here, we can actually just drag in and drop them onto empty chord pads. So we can then sort of use them to play around with and create our chord progression. So it's just another way of doing things. So I'm going to close that for now. Now one thing I can do with all of these chords is I can click on this down arrow which opens up the editor. And from here, I can then further sort of tweak each of the chords that I've got showing in my chord pads. Now, we're not going to do that for anything we're using here, but if you sort of understand music theory and you want to change the chord from a major to a minor, etc., or add a seventh, then you can do that in the chord editor. 
Now, if this is not making sense to you or you are terrified at the thought of learning music theory, don't worry, we have a whole course called Music Theory for EDM producers that will enable you to understand the basics and then make your own highly creative and unique chord progressions and lead melodies. It makes music theory super easy to understand, so it's perfect for beginners and is rated 5 out of 5 by the many students who have used it to start writing their own awesome chord progressions and melodies. So starting with the first chord on the first pad in the bottom left hand corner, we can then click other pads in sequence to sort of come up with a, a nice chord progression. Now that is actually the chord progression that we're going to use for this track, so it's very easy to get that into Cubase, so we just drag in the chord. That's our first one, B minor, then D flat, then F minor, and I'm just going to zoom out again, again holding control and using my mouse wheel, and then got our last chord, A flat, out into there. And again I'm going to just copy all of our drum beat across so I can just select that and hit Control D or Command D, set my loop region, and then we've got our full progression. There we are, that was easy, wasn't it? So I want to edit this chord progression just a little bit to make it just a little bit more exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these and then I'm going to right click and hold that down and then I'm going to go over to the glue tool, select that and then glue all of those together. So it's now one MIDI segment and then when I double click on that and go into the editor, just zoom out a bit and I can see there all of my chords laid out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is, because we're working at a quite a slow tempo, it's only 70 beats per minute, so these chords are sort of happening a bit too slowly. So we want to speed that up. Now what I could do is kind of highlight all of the chords and then make them a bit smaller and then sort of drag them all so they're all a bit smaller and taking up less sort of time. I could do that, but that's going to take ages. So another even better way of doing it is to actually click on your MIDI segment, hold Alt or Option on the Mac and right click, and then we go to Logical Presets, Standard Set, and then we're going to go to Double Tempo. And you can see there it's just automatically fits all of that in to one block of MIDI. And we just shorten that, and then we can Control D again to copy and then we got our faster sort of chord progression. And you can do likewise if you really want to, you can hold Alt again or Option, right click, Logical Presets, and if you want to double that time then we can go to, again to the standard set and go to double temp, sorry, half tempo, and that will just make them twice the length. So for now I just want to work on one of these, so let's just delete that second one and then just set my loop region by hitting P to that segment there. Now there's just a couple more things that I want to change here in my chord progression. And it's just the last chord. It sounds okay at the moment but I think it can sound better. So we're going to do something that is actually called borrowing a chord. Now I'm not going to go into too many details about it as it requires a sort of basic understanding of music theory, which again you can get from our music theory for electronic music producers course. But simply put, we're going to change the last chord from a major chord to a minor chord by shifting the G sharp. I'm just highlighting both of those and hitting the down arrow to change that into a G. And we're also going to take this D sharp here and we're going to move it down a whole octave by holding shift and then hitting the down arrow. And that just jumps it a whole octave, so it's still D sharp, but just an octave lower. And then the very, very last thing I'm going to do is move this C down to A sharp. And then let's have a listen to that. Okay. 
and you can hear that last chord it really just adds a, a lot of emotion to the chord progression so okay that's good so far but let's do one very last thing before we go a bit of housekeeping and that's let's change our Halley and Sonic let's just call this our pad hold down shift and hit enter and that relabels the segment as well and that's it for this lesson in the next lesson Jay's gonna take you further into the sampler track and we're gonna start fleshing out the track a bit more if this has been helpful to you please do like subscribe and hit the alert button to be kept up to date with the latest Cubase 10 and music production videos from borntoproduce.com thanks for watching